is the 2018 Honda Africa Twin, so generation one you could say, with the uh, standard dash. Um, so my uh, my video is, I've been doing some uh, maintenance, shall we say. I uh, The keenly eyed will see, I've no foot peg, and it's the right hand side. It's this bad boy, it's happened the worst. Um, should go there, and it's missing. I went to bed one night and in the night my Africa Twin fell over on this lovely carpet garage and it snapped the foot peg off and it did all that to the crash bars, would you believe? I did have um, a really interesting dream about right, a south port through Croston, went to Chippy, met some lads, rode down the road, fell off at the last corner, skidded down the road, low more bag got battered, then I woke up and yeah, this had happened in the morning. Um, so will i buy another one so i've got the big the big back plate you if you've not seen it let's just take it if you're not seeing it so so this plate here this whole thing so so the backstop for the side stand all the way up so this is cast aluminium bolts in there bolts in there holds the brake um holds the brake pivot and mechanism at the back so it's a whopping big piece i think it's three or four hundred quid from under um anyway for a tight northern they like me that's a lot of money so um oh, i'm doing a one-handed camera job here i'm not good with two hands oh, we're back so i thought i know what i'll do i'll make it a, a mild steel so obviously it didn't break like that i've i've sawn it off and i've i've cut a chamfer in there we'll discuss that shortly that's about a, a three mil step um and you can see it's really interesting the way that they've made this obviously it's very light um the the two prongs that we're looking at now in in normal um use where you stood on the peg so that's that's its orientation if i put the peg put the peg on that's the easiest uh, way to do it obviously it's been bent as it hit the carpet God damn it. I'm going to uh, strongly worded email to carpet, right, I think. Um, so as you normally stood on the peg, those two um, upper these are in tension. So they could be cables, in, in effect. Um, underneath, you've got that big ridge. And then you've got under a so confident on, uh, on you standing on the peg... They've wasted out those two channels. Um, save weight, I don't know. Maybe uh, as a as a sacrificial part, so that if if you don't have a bad dream and skid down the road, you uh, your foot peg will break off at the weak point, a bit like the um, a bit like the channels at the end of your levers. So it's super super thin there, really thin. I mean, like we're talking single figures millimeters under five millimeters thick they're tiny little so i was reluctant to buy a new part because i thought in fact that's that has got to be like, how thin is that there nothing to it um so i thought well if i literally lie this down again not not on the road to croston southport chippy um you know just in the garage on the carpet it'll it'll bust again so i thought i'm gonna I'm going to make myself a mild steel variant. Um, I should have uh, bought the camel brace, and what I did, I bought the bought the aluminium, and uh, and was going to fashion that. I was waiting to uh, get some inspiration on welding aluminium. That didn't come, and and here we are. So this is the uh, number one uh, prototype. Uh, I won't say finished article, but it's made out of mild steel. It's uh, it's very well. It's 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 really heavy compared to obviously it's uh, it's aluminium counterpart. But that bolts straight onto there. Now I flattened that face off. Um, it doesn't rotate because I've got a step. I've welded a step into it. That's just another piece of metal I've welded in the right place. And then. Um, and I've tried to replicate as much as I can 
the different components so I make it strong enough that it doesn't flex because it did flex with one piece would you believe and I'm only 12 stone not showing off but um, the it's also obviously can't be stronger than the bike otherwise this will stay still and the bike will start to bend and the frame will pull apart and what have you so so let me um let me get this on in fact i could do this one-handed because i've got my mate milwaukee with me if you're thinking of treating yourself this christmas get one of these bad boys these are awesome I, uh, I literally, I came in weighing this job up and I had to take my exhaust off and I literally, if anybody's taken the exhaust off an Africa Swim before, you'll know it's pain in the arse, it's, a, it's at least a one brew job, probably 30 minutes and I, I had it off in less than a minute, 30, one minute 30, it was off and I'm not exaggerating. It's uh, just makes life so easy. So the big the big hurdles that I had to overcome when I made this was how to get that pin in the correct orientation to that bolt so that the peg was in the right place. Because this peg, as you can see, it's not level; it, it, it's tilted in. And and when you look at when you look at bike pegs, they are notoriously tilted in. That's 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 how they are. So your knees knock onto the tank, and have it, you know, coming out the right distance, the right forward back. It's a difficult thing to do. So, so you see this back plate here. I made that out of thick steel, and I then fashioned my ears, as it were, to to cradle the peg. Um, and and then once I'd made this this part, so that we'll call them the ears for the peg. And then the back plate, which was just a square piece of um, square piece of I don't know uh, what would you call it, just standard square piece of steel. You can see it better now. Um, I welded a bar about there, and I came out the right distance, measuring my uh, trusty cardboard cutout that I put around my original aluminium casting. You can see there that's where I, that's where I went up to for the for the plate with the ears for that um put a bar on there welded it so i could then bend this around and up and down and left and right so i could go to the back of the bike and i could look and look again and bend and look again and bend and look again and there's quite a lot of jiggery pokery involved um it's uh it's not an easy thing getting your peg in exactly the right place and of course you don't want it in the wrong place so um that was my solution to that problem. I'm sure there's somebody smarter out there who's come up with one. I could come up with one that was better, but needs must. So I replaced the, I replicated the original, original aluminium piece. And I did that by creating this upright between the backing plate and, and the plate for the ears. And this upright here follows the doctrine BD cubed, so breadth times depth cubed. So down in there, my phone won't look in there. That's pretty deep, that. Um, that's probably the biggest piece apart from the back plate. And it's, um, I should have the, I should have the cardboard um, equivalent. I have got it somewhere. By the way, before you do a job like this, you better get eating cereal because you're going to go through a lot of cardboard. This was... Uh, this is this is not my first take, believe me. Um, so so that stopped the flex. That holds it up. That that it, effectively the top of that is in is in tension. So when my weight comes down on the peg, I'm pulling around the top of the bolt through the um, welds up the sides of this um, uh, lateral plate. Uh, of course, if the if the um, if the foot peg gets a knock from the forward um, from a forward uh, obstacle, it would have folded in. So I've put this plate in there, and obviously this plate had to go in to support the bottom because as it pulls from the top, the only way it can keep steady is pushing back in at the bottom. 
so those in compression those in tension this little side plate there is it is more substantial than this little plate here um that's to that's to keep it steady if it gets a knock from from the back and that's to keep it steady if it gets a, a knock from the front that's obviously just generally to to push on as the uh, as there's uh, weight on the peg so i mean the this area that I've left it is is so that if the bike does go over, obviously in my sleep, if I have a bad dream um, about going across and chippy, and it gets knocked up and it goes over, this is an area that it can potentially fold into, and so that can bend up, but leave me where I don't have to ride side saddle all the way home, and I've got at least some peg where I can then make some repairs to this. I mean, this isn't... I'm not some... Um, I'm not an engineer or anything. This is uh, this this was done with an, an Aldi welder and a Clark 90. Clark 90, where is it? There it is. So um, so I'm not. Uh, this is this is very much a, a DIY. A, a DIY. What do you call it? Oh, I'm not me for a camera. I'm a focus. Uh, a, a DIY affair. So I, I would say anybody who's who can have a bit of a go. And, and of course, these are big pieces of metal. So. They're not um, they're not difficult. Tig, uh, sorry, stick and mig are uh, are easily um, are easily uh, appropriate. Um, again, I'm I'm just a, I would say I'm a, I'm a competent or confident uh, DIY welder. So um, nothing nothing too special. Just a little bit of uh, a little bit of. Uh, I don't know planning that needs to go in if, if you look at some of my uh, mistakes were i've had to trim this 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 failed the brake um i had the brake on I, I put it on too many rungs down it wasn't level with the peg and it was fouling the top so i have cut some off that arc but there's plenty of room now to that that's that's me operating the pedal um so there's plenty of room now for that obviously the step that step there that goes across with the corresponding piece on the back plate means that the peg won't won't rotate. There is a little bit of rotation as the hole wasn't exactly where I wanted it in relation to that that back step. But um, all in all, I get it ground off, get it plated, uh, get it uh, painted up, and hopefully it will be all right. I might um, I might also treat myself to some. Um, some aluminium welding um, while it's all in bits and, and make the uh, camel plates come up to support the come to support the peg that'll be very easy now because I won't have to make something that absolutely sits on the ear of the peg which you it's the only brace point on the aluminium um, on the aluminium counterpart this obviously I can just weld a piece on as I like um, my, my difficulty with this will be bending and re-welding the aluminium which is not a major problem to have um, so let me know what you think if you are mechanically minded and you've got some ideas where i can support this 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 opening here also allows me to get in and clean it i've deliberately left gaps so i can clean mud out because it's been it has been uh, it has done a little bit of off-roading this bad boy um and also get the nut in and out um and get the and get the tools on to get it in and out quickly once the peg's off so if you've got any ideas about a little uh, a little support here or there or whether you think it's too strong again this is three mil aluminium stainless steel too deep uh, mainly at the back effectively a, a a big washer on top of the one three mil plate and then and, and then a, a step at the back so it's um, another three mil at the back for the indentation that that holds it uh, in place there i could i could drill another hole and tap it and put a bolt in somewhere down here to stop it rub but it's not going to rotate once it's tightened up um so there we go i will uh, i'll let you know how i get on if anybody does want the rough dimensions like i say you, you you'll need to fine tune it yourself to your own bike but if there's a, enough interest in this, I might put a, um, a montage of... Uh, I did 
every time I made a piece, I put um, I took a picture because I'm like that, and I could put a montage together so that you got a better idea of the bits that didn't work for me and the bits that did. Obviously, this is this is the first this is the first go. It, it could um, it could go horribly wrong, but um, I I think I'm quite happy with it. I think I'm I think I'm about there, and I've got uh, I've got most angles covered. I might also do a I might also do a little video on uh, repairing the heat crash bars. These yeah, so these are heat bunker bars. You can only imagine what kind of trouble I would have been in if I hadn't got these on. So if you've got an Africa twin with DCT and you were uh, you eat too much cheese at bedtime and um, have bad dreams about losing the back end on country roads then you'd be picking gravel out the engine if you do go for a slide uh, it would have just wrecked it it would have gone that would have been it so that's been that's paid for itself so what i intend to do is probably cut that at um at this junction bend it back out because it's got quite close to the engine now um and then re-weld some um some strengtheners you know cut this uh grazed piece out reweld some um paneling in uh not for next time and 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 bend it out obviously i can get a tube in there i can pull that out i can get a tube in there and pull that out and then reform that bend and get it welded up properly i did put um i have done a bit of work to these so so when i was doing my off-roading i put um aluminium plates down here i was worried about rocks going in and and cracking the engine cases so i made plates up from the um very substantial bash plate that isn't on at the minute up to the and, and it made the whole thing quite rigid and one thing i decided to do with the, where the lawnmower bags go in that gap what i didn't want to do that they, they would quite neatly fit through there and i've seen bags that go through and what you don't want is is them punching through you can you can see the radiator if they punch through with enough force and not that radiator wouldn't be wouldn't be too difficult for that to then uh, lose its fluid and then you're going nowhere so that um what i did there i just put a lug two lugs on each side or one i think it was one yeah one long lug and, and a thin plate of aluminium across um which sat behind the bag and obviously that completely did the trick and probably saved me breaking out there was there isn't a mark on the bike from a from a cosmetic point of view it's all been confined to this foot peg and this crash bar so the lawnmower bag absolute sterling job um unlike me uh, me me um me oxford gear that was uh, that was great that reminded me of um that reminded me of being at manchester airport in 1982 and tripping up in a shell suit yeah that's uh yeah, no, that didn't go through to the bone, but that wasn't that didn't do me much good. So, yeah, get a decent set of textiles if you're uh, planning on sliding down the road. Uh, I didn't end well. So, I hope that helps. Sorry about the morning. Um, any tips on last strengtheners before I zip this all up and clean it up and paint it? And uh, much appreciated. Um, anybody wants any directions, uh, dimensions, or any? details uh send me a message i'll do what i can take care